Hi Chuck, here we go. You wanted to learn how to resize your footage so that you could pan and zoom and uh, insert some still graphics and do the same pan and zoom with those. So with that, let's get started. I'm gonna um, pull this over here into the timeline. And when you do that, if you've, if you've set it up so that it is in 4K, you're not going to get this warning because the, the settings are already set to 4K footage. What I want you to do is when you start the project is do it in 2K um, or even 1K because really for YouTube you don't need any more than 1K uh, footage. So uh, 1280 by 720 is more than enough for YouTube to have a nice clean clear picture. Um, anything larger than that, if you start getting into the 1920 by 1080, it starts getting a little difficult for other people to download, especially on mobile devices, if that's where they're going to be watching it from. And you have a great deal of traffic coming from mobile devices these days. So the smaller the footage, the better for your mobile customers because you have to keep in mind their data plans and all this kind of stuff when you're doing these. So. Um, I'm going to keep these existing settings and what you'll see is I can actually uh, move this around um, if you click in the timeline on your actual clip and then go over here to effects controls you're gonna see this come up called motion um, and we're gonna click on that and you can see these little bounding boxes on the outside in order to zoom and pan. Now I kept the original settings, um, but in order to zoom and pan, you can grab those little bounding box squares and you can see you can make it whatever size you want. Or you can use this scale right here and you can type in, do 50%, you can go 150% or it'll let you go in and out like that. When you're zooming in and out and you want to do a, um, let's say you have uh, one sentence where you wanna show this one picture, have it zoom for that entire length. So this clip is 32 seconds long. So let's say I wanna go five seconds, which would be right here. I'm going to go back, select my clip, and at the very beginning of that, I want it to be at 100%. So we're going to come over here and we're going to click this little toggle and it's going to pull up what's called a keyframe. Now we're going to go to that five second mark and at five seconds, I want it to be twice the size. So now when you play it back, you can see it's zooming in on his hand. The same applies for still graphics. If you want to move them around, each one of these keyframes will do that for you. Now, here we have, um, you know, I just have it zooming straight in on the center. If you don't change any of the position settings, it's just going to zoom in right here, dead center. So let you watch that again. You can see it's going right in here to the dead center of that screen. But let's say what I want to do is focus over here on these fingers over here. So we're going to go back to that five second mark. Oops, sorry. First we need to tell it where it's going to start. So as soon as it starts, we want it in this position. When we get to the five second mark, we now want it on that other hand, more focused on that other hand. So you take this over here where it says position. This is left, right. And this is up, down. So that's how you move those around. Now with your stills, let's take this still. And if your settings are, are, are the default settings that Premiere came with, it's going to automatically default to a three second, I'm sorry, a five second length clip for any still clip that you put in there. If you want to make it more, so 
at the top of this we were at 33 seconds at the end we're at 37 at 38 um, so let's say we wanted to go out add three seconds to that we're going to take it out to 40 seconds okay now you can see this one's very small compared to the rest of your area in here so oops let's go back to the beginning and we're just going to start on that position and scale where it's at and by the end of that 40 seconds by the end of that clip we want to have it full size and as it's going across we're going to have it shift down to this corner here's the other cool thing that you can do once you've got one keyframe in here you can actually just grab this you want to make sure that motion is highlighted you're going to take this and see how that blue box is coming up you can send it in any direction you want so we're going to pull it all the way off screen and now you're going to see it's going to enlarge and go off screen at the same time so while you're playing around with that and any keyframes that you add in there um, are going to make it do different things. So let's say halfway through um, we want to make it go up a little. We can take this little drag thing and make it go on a curve. Um, if you don't want that, we can take this one. Oops let's say halfway through we want it to go up and then down and then it'll start its downward curve so adding those keyframes is the easiest way to do the pans and zooms that you want to do you have rotation in here so let's say at the very beginning of this frame you want it upside down Oops. So it'll be 180. And as it goes around, so there's our keyframe. Now, as it goes around to the end, you want it to spin back to its original setting. And then that way you can kind of make it pop off the screen like that. So I hope that helps. If you have any more questions about keyframes, let me know, and I'll try to answer them for you. If you want to do a uh, like a Skype session, um, I'm more than happy to do that also. Just give me a call and let me know, or send me a, a Facebook message, and I'll try to respond to you as soon as, you, as soon as I can. I know I've been on spotty internet since I've been traveling, but um, just send me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you have any more questions, you know my email. And I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.